before you use your drone, anything having to do with wildlife, be sure to check with the local warden before you do because there's such a thing as the Airborne uh, Hunting Act, which does not allow the use of, of drones or any kind of airplane. Looks like we're going to be eating. Oh, we're going to be eating good, buddy. Oh, that's just right. Oh, yes, these things are browning up nicely. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We're so glad you tuned in to join us for another exciting real-world outdoor adventure right here on A Sportsman's Life. So Logan, where's the where's the bird right now? Is it? It is coming. It should be coming right over this patch of trees that we have right here. It's pretty good ways out right now. Yeah, we're about a thousand feet away coming in. Okay. Well, folks, we are back here at the Cotton Ranch. Mr. Edgar is on station. Edgar, you ready to eat uh, some? Uh, yep. I, yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> and, and look who we got over here, Mr. Larry. Larry has got his signature dish right here. Just keep the, bragging on it. Hopefully, it'll be good this time. <laughs> I, can, I, can see, I can see a restaurant of boned chicken thighs, by golly. Exactly what it is. Now that's that is my and favorite chicken. Seasoning. But anyway, and then we got Mr. David, of course, and uh, and this gentleman is he's going to walk right here. So the light is Mr. Lawrence Rice, longtime friend of mine. Lawrence and his buddy and his son and buddy Logan's out here, and and y'all are going to fly this with they're in the y'all are in the drone business. That's correct. And and person can you know get Logan and if they want to find the hogs. Put the thermal drone up, and it's just now getting dark. And here he is, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Logan. Logan, well, he, you've given us a good demonstration during the uh, the daylight, yes. and even Google Earth, you've overlaid the, the flight of that drone. But we're going to turn the thermal on in a little bit, right? Yes, sir. See if anything's moving out there, coyotes, hogs, anything we can see. So really, you look right here, there's a campfire. Mr. Weiss and all of our, if we were actually hog hunting, which we might do one of the real soon one each time, you could say, go over to the long field or whatever, the, oh. and, and the hogs are right there, keep the fire going and the chicken thighs to <laughs> eat, yeah. and then we could come go shoot a hog and come back, right? Yeah, we're, we're not wasting our time looking for them. We're going to find them, <laughs> go to them, or stay right here. Well, before we forget, Really, people that want it, want your services to, to bring to, for you to come out and find the hogs for them, or maybe uh, Larry does the biology on this for the deer. You know the deer surveys uh, to do that kind, just to see what's on the place. They could. How would they contact y'all? Well, they can reach me yep. at uh, on my cell phone. Is the easiest way. Uh, we have a website which is lr3services.com. Uh, you can reach us on that. Or you can message us through that. Maybe do we have that set our, up yet? Our contacts on there, but our contact is on there. Well, you can reach me at eight one seven two zero five nine nine one nine. You can text me, call me, leave me a voicemail, but uh, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. And uh, we can come wherever you are and and perform whatever services you need yeah. done on your property. So uh, very ver versatile tool, and hopefully you get to see a little bit of that in a minute. And yep. it's going to be kind of interesting to 
go search for hogs while we're still sitting by the fire. Larry, this could be very helpful when you start doing your survey, couldn't it, sir? It really can, but one thing we need to remind people of, we're, this is an area right here in Texas where in Texas you can use a helicopter to fly and, and kill hogs out of with the proper permits. This goes to a lot of different countries and a lot of different states, and every state is different. So before you use your drone, anything having to do with wildlife, be sure to check with the local warden before you do because there's such a thing as the Airborne uh, Hunting Act, which does not allow the use of, of drones or any kind of airplanes or anything like that when anything having to do with hunting. So, like I said, be sure to check with your local warden before you do, but fabulous tool here. I'm really looking forward to using this more as from a perspective of as a survey to get a better idea as to what, because we got a lot of country here that we can't get into and get a good idea of what's there with a spotlight or even just sitting and watching with this drone. It gives us that opportunity to look at some areas that we just, as I mentioned, just can't get into. So it's going to be fun. Excuse me while I get back to the chicken. <laughs> Logan, you're going to look for some hogs, right? Yeah, we're going to see if anything's out and about. See if anything is out and about. <laughs> Off and away. And she's gone. Boy, yeah, you want to just jump out of the pen. <laughs> and there's more small ones over yep. here. Yeah, that might be. Brought to you by Dallas Safari Club, conservation, education, and hunter advocacy. Hornaday, accurate, deadly, dependable. 
Taurus Firearms, maker of the Raging Hunter. Stealth Vision, high-tech precision driven equipment tailored for the modern hunter. Well, hello, my friends. It's your old buddy, Luke Clayton, and it is a beautiful sunny day, sunny springtime day here in Combine, Texas. I've been kind of uh, confined to the area here lately. My wife had a shoulder surgery, so I've been sticking pretty close to home. But thank goodness I've got some friends that own land that let me hunt and fish within, actually I have a corn feeder about a quarter of a mile that way for, for hogs. Uh, the area was stocked with wild turkey with Rios about four or five years ago. If you watched some of our previous shows, you saw some of the early pre-breeding season footage that I got of those uh, Rios. There's a bunch of them that looks like they're doing really good. So we're going to try to do a actually call some of course you can't hunt them there's no season now but we're going to try to call some in and almost like we're hunting right here close to home i'll be able to do that uh, my buddy kenneth shepherd has got a gravel pit that's a pretty deep and pretty big but it's full of all kind of fish it's got some gar in it and uh th there's uh, alligator gar needle nose gar and, but what we're going to try to do is get some gar not too much longer than this. In other words, about two foot long gar. If you've never eaten gar, folks, I'm here to tell you they are excellent. Snow white meat. Uh, they're a little bit of a challenge to clean. And there's a lot of YouTube videos that will show you how to clean them. Basically, you just cut the top of that back with a, you take a little, oh, a little uh, machete or something that you can chop with, a little chopper or a heavy knife and then cut along the top of that gar and then you can just fillet it out with two back straps with a fillet knife just like you would a, a deer for that matter but gar trust me is excellent eating we're going to let kenneth uh take it take his bow and possibly probably shoot some eater gar over at his place and this is a jug a jug line actually a noodle it's like a swimming pool noodle made out of that it's got a counterbalance and some couple of very sharp hooks. We're going to set some of these out. This is called a Doug's Jug. It's online, dugsjugs.com. I've got several of these. We're going to put some of these out, and then we're going to try to shoot shoot some gar with a bow, which I think we'll be able to do. There's a lot of gar over there, so I think it'll be a fun show. I think you'll enjoy it. The plan is for Kenneth right now to shoot one or two. We're going to go ahead and bait this up with some cut bait after we get some cut bait. Uh, and then we're going to cook the gar. Uh, it's not going to be an instructional show on how to clean the gar. Again, YouTube is packed with really good uh, videos on cleaning gar. I know how to do it. I'm real slow doing it, but I'll be cleaning these probably off camera for us. Uh, but we will cook them and uh, have, us a, have us a little gar segment today. So let's head over to my buddies. It's about a mile from here and uh, see if he's got his bow ready and let's get us some gar for the prime Kenneth, man. There are a bunch of maybe mating gar over there. Go get them, buddy. Right there. Let's yeah. Get it. All right. Uh, let me show the. Yeah, he's on up there. Yeah. There he is. bigger and I might not miss him. Looks like we're gonna be eating. Oh we're gonna be eating good buddy. Oh that's just right. Kenneth a lot of people do not realize that those things are really good eating. Snow white meat. Look at that shot buddy. Like Kenneth's it. bottom line is, I, I, folks, I've known this guy a long time. You don't miss a heck of a lot. I don't care if you're shooting something with an iron sights or what. Nah, I get like oh, well, you'll miss every now and then, but yeah, not much. Man, I can't get it out. Like. It's okay. Look at that. Let me get over here. Now, Mr. Wysu likes to, to shoot these, or catch. He doesn't shoot them. These gar are about... From there to your boot, about that long. Well, in the yeah. Trinity? Well, I like it too, Luke. I, 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 yeah, but these right here is what I want to eat. I, I say we try to get... 
Now you and I, the, the ultimate goal, you and I are going to be eating these. I'm going to take them back over to the house, and I've already told our friends listening that I'm not going to bore them making them watch me clean a gar. There's a lot of YouTube videos, and right behind you, I see three more gar. Oh, Let's, get more. More. <laughs> Let's get some more. Let's get some more. Kenneth, you've got spotted two more, haven't you? Yeah. Two Smaller more. ones? They're harder to hit. I know they are. Well... Don't worry. I mean, I even missed a shot at something once way back. I have back. not seen you miss a shot, Lou. Oh, yes, I have. I don't. I just never tell anybody. I never put it on camera when I miss. Uh -huh. Let's see. Where are those rascals? But, you know, when we drove up here, I told you, I said, I bet they'll be up shallow. You did, right when we drove up. And by golly, they were. Kenneth, that's, that's a long one, but why not try it, right? That cost anything. That's right. <laughs> right under him. Is that what it was? Still well, fun. Yeah, like you say, it didn't cost anything. Why not shoot at him, right? Show us a fish arrow here, buddy. Some right. folks maybe never seen that. Just ordering them on Amazon. This one kind of has a little swing to it. I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah. But you just unscrew the tip and uh, it comes right back out. Pretty simple. Our buddy Mark Millette, I've done a lot of this with him in years past, I guarantee you. Yeah, out on, on Lake Livingston out there. Yeah, I bet y'all did. Mark knows how to have a good time, too. Mark, yeah, a good time starts when you say hello to Mark, right? Yeah, every time. Kind of like yeah. me and you together, you know. <laughs> well, Kenneth, well, there's another one out there, buddy. There he comes. I don't think we can see him with our camera. We'll be real quiet. Look at you hid behind that bush. True hunter style. That's, this is camouflage. Oh, I know. I know what you're thinking. If I were that gar, he is, folks, the gar is right down there, turned sideways. Kenneth is going to try. I think I heard a whack. I thought I heard it too, but I don't feel it. It may have glanced off. No, it, I heard it hit. I did too. Folks, this is what bow and arrow fishing is all about. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. A couple of Canada geese, graders it looks like. A pair of nesting out here. Beautiful birds. A lot of water out here for these gar. We've been finding them most most of them up in these little pockets like this. Kenneth, there's one right off to my right. You'll see him right over here. Oh, I do see him. He's dead. You got him. I don't know about dead. No. He... <laughs> well, he's going to wind up in the skillet. A Sportsman's Life is also brought to you by Mossberg, American built. American Strong, The Wyo Steakhouse, Catch and Release Apparel, AGM Global Vision, your go-to for thermal hunting scopes and spotters, Pyramid Air, your one-stop shop for everything air guns, and Vineyard Max Deer Products. Hello sports fans, it's Bill, the old man at Striper Express with your fishing tip this week on A Sportsman's Life. Hey, we've all had line twists. We've all been doing it right and wrong way, but I'm gonna show you the newest, coolest way I've seen to spool a spinning reel. I've already got it attached to my reel. Good old six gill reaver and a good old six gill cypress rod. Check this out, this is warm water. I saw Bill Dan say, run your spool under water, warm water to get the line twist out. I'm taking this to another level. Check it out, warm water. Check this out. Always close the bail with your hand. Always. And that causes line twist. Here we go. Watch this. Let me do this. Okay, I'm a little gimped out. Let's do this. Watch this. That line is warm. There is no line twist while you're spooling. Alright, 
guys. Look at that. No line twist. Awesome. Man, I like that idea. Warm water in a bowl like that, you eliminate line twist. And then, every time you go fishing, every time I go fishing, sorry, good old real magic. I use this on my rods and my reels. I spray it on everything. Just hit it like this. That's all it takes. Every time you go fishing, do that. Next week, we're going to talk about how to eliminate line twist. But there is a good way to show you how to put it on without line twist. So, until next week, go catch a fish. Well, friends, I promised you that I would not make you endure watching me clean this gar. There are plenty of good instructional gar cleaning videos on YouTube. But I'll show you what I'm going to do. Got this good cleaver, and this is a good one. My son gave me this. A lot of purposes for this. We're going to take the gar, and I'm going to start right in here. And I'm going to hack right down all the way along the top here. And then, we're, then the top of this will be exposed. And then basically just take our old fillet, fillet knife and just peel around the hide. That goes pretty quickly actually on both sides. And there's a fillet, a back strap if you will, that runs on this side and this side. So I'm going to get to work and in probably another 15 minutes I'll have this some, turned into some good white little nuggets of gar. Well friends, I really surprised myself. It only took probably three minutes to turn these out. Look at these snow white back straps, if you will. Now, crappie meat is white. Have you ever seen a whiter freshwater fish meat than this? Maybe a blue catfish. My plan now is to just cut this into some nuggets and we're going to marinate these. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? We're going to marinate these overnight in some Tony's. Probably a little, probably a little Louisiana hot sauce. But that's it, folks. Look at that snow white meat. And then Kenneth will be over later, and we're going to fire up the old fish cooker and have some fried gar fillets and we're going to let them marinate overnight and we'll do that tomorrow so stick with us we'll be back with the fire burning in probably about 24 hours well friends i'm sure you know when the grease is hot enough that's when you hear that little sizzle so here's our first piece of snow white gar fillet going in and you can see it's sizzling right here i think you can that grease is just right, well seasoned, I like to cook with cornmeal, sometimes I'll mix a little flour with the cornmeal, but this is looking just right right here. These are just the right size nuggets I think. Don't know if you can hear that sizzle, maybe you can. But that's the kind of cook fire you need. You don't need a great big fire when you're cooking. You can build a big fire, but you need to rake the coals off to the side. So let's get these. They're already browning up nicely. It'll only take with that fire that hot, it'll only take probably, oh, maybe three, four more minutes and they'll be ready. Oh yes, these things are browning up nicely. Don't know if Kenneth will make it in time for our wrap up of our little show, but you know who the, the bow fisherman is, Mr. Kenneth Shepard. These are looking just right, just right. And these, my friends, are ready to go. Let's take them up. Gar nuggets. I 
think all that's needed is a little, maybe a little barbecue sauce on these, a little ketchup, or possibly a little, just a little hot sauce on them and eat them. That's what it looks like, my friends. So friends, trust me, I have killed us some of these set back on the side. We're going to have some camp beans and some potato salad with them. But I hope you enjoyed our little segment on gar shooting with a bow. We're going to set some jug lines out and catch some more of these. These are really good. To give you an honest uh, appraisal, now compare them to, say, catfish, the gar nuggets. The flavor is just as good, but they're a little, the, the texture is a little bit tougher than most uh, freshwater fish, but it's very, very tasty. And you can see I did. I cooked these things, you know, till they're really well done. Maybe if I'd have took them off a little bit quicker. But I don't cook gar every day, you know. This is kind of a novelty for me, but they are good eating, uh, especially the smaller gar. So next time you're out, you might want to give them a try. You know how to clean them now and cook them. Try them out for yourself. I don't think it's uh, a fish that you want to totally overlook. Folks, this segment was brought to us by Gearhead Archery, Smoke Intex Electric Smokers, Snaplock Hunting Blinds, Y.O. Ranch Headquarters, Ultramatic Feeders, and Catfish Pro. Tune in next week for some more real-world outdoor adventures right here on A Sportsman's Life.